I used to be one of them. Risen from the dead to fight like all the others. Sometimes I wonder if this is even my fight anymore. But then I walk through the city, get to see their faces, and for a moment, I remember. The darkness, the light, it doesn't define the actions we have to take. Now here we are at Beyond Light. Initially, I have to skip the intro to the DLC as apparently I already did the first mission on my Titan. Meaning that YOU CALM THE F*** DOWN! Don't you dare say to me, Riley, you chuckle f***! You didn't even complete the first mission of Beyond Light! I wipe my ass with your entire channel! But trust me, with the Witch Queen roaring around the corner, I have a feeling that I'll be stalking these halls again in no time. We begin our journey in Beyond Light with a new Kel mission this time. However, unlike in the Can You Beat Beyond Light with only a powered melee video, I now have the ability to cruise across the Europan countryside with my Sparrow. Our first mission has us on our way to Reese Reborn to finally be introduced formally to the Kel of Darkness. I approach the elevator to the Fallen City and just like before, show the elixir that you don't mess with Papa Rai when he's on a breakaway. My callous mini tool is slapping cheeks left and right. Any enemy that doesn't meet my shotgun or callous combination gets the mightiest of potato sackings. It's honestly disgusting how I show up once again to demolish the hopes and dreams of so many fallen just trying to make their way in the universe. Having any semblance of civilization, order, and stability for your people? Not on my watch, asshole. You know, as I sit back and watch the absolute decimation of the fallen by a single guardian that doesn't even have any powers, I can't help but feel sad for them. But in this world it's nutter be nutted and I'm busting out the mason jars baby on the bridge I continue my obliteration of the fallen forces they set up pitiful blockade at the end of the bridge with heavy reinforcements I use my whisper of the worm to land precision bullets into the eye hole of the shank but its smaller sniper shanks briefly get the better of me causing me to retreat behind this barricade in order to not get iced and regen my health I heal up and continue my reign of terror these wretches charge me but I'm feeling like a turbo beefcake and one by one they catch these hands because they are rated E for everyone we then get to watch the cutscene where my man in the back is happy to be living life which Aramis deems to be a crime punishable by death. Oddly enough, that's the conclusion I've drawn on every mission that the Vanguard has sent me on so far. She then threatens me by saying, looks like our guest is here, but little does she know I've slaughtered countless fallen on my way up here, destroying many families and wrecking many homes simply by coming up here. So I take a moment to change my armor back to the Meridian Constellation as my moon gear is no longer needed, and she sends her forces out after me, but since I'm possessed by the spirit of death himself, I casually stroll my ass out of her fortress as though it was a nice Sunday picnic and return to my ship that is just waiting there to make my retreat. I return to Sharon's Crossing to speak with Varix, who tells me that he ran away from Aramis, but I think that's a good move because simply being in her presence means you get Watashiwad in the fucking nose. But he then tells me that apparently there's some good fallen left that I haven't turned into a chalk outline yet, and Varix doesn't want them to be left behind, as the purpose of Reese Reborn was to be a permanent home for the Elixni, to stop them from chasing after the Great Machine and give their people a second chance at life in the universe, that purpose being twisted by the manipulations of the darkness and Aramis's hyperfixation on the Great Machine. I'm then 
sent to reactivate the comms relay, but in true Guardian style, I break it down on the relay because in D2, not even a Guardian without the light can escape the drive to dance maniacally at any opportunity. Upon activating the last terminal, a darkness crux arrives and instantly clears the weather. It then beckons me to follow it, but it is then I'm faced with my greatest challenge so far. Bungie decided to put a jump that looked extremely too far to Eager Edge. I give myself some warm-up lunges to try and clear the gap, but I wind up chicking out because god damn that gap is a scurry. I think about it for a moment and decide that maybe I should see if I could find a way around the ledge. Taking this way makes my raider flip the fuck out until it eventually just says new objective. We finding loopholes out here, lads! I hop on my sparrow and race through the icy tunnels, leading exactly to where I wanted to go, just coming out through a different exit. The darkness then sends down its ambassador with a silly name. The fallen think, oh shit, a new power for us, but little did they know the dark vanguard were coming in hot to bend them over and take them down to Flavortown. I don't know why pre-made cutscenes in Destiny with people fighting at close ranges with guns are just so amazing to me. This single triple tap made me do this. <laughs> Got a feel for those elixir because their entire corporeal form was just vaporized with a single punch. At this point, I honestly have no idea why they continue to keep on fighting it. <laughs> when there's these impressive displays of power around at every corner, I would have watched my buddy Jerry just get fucking vaporized and been like, Oh shit, I give up, take me in! <laughs> Even though I just witnessed horrible atrocities and war crimes on full display, and the light has indeed left my body, at least Dummy Mommy LC Bray still wants to talk to me. So ask yourself, who's the real winner <laughs> in this scenario? I'm sorry, who let me speak on a platform? Why do you guys listen to me? I once again return to get jiggy in the ziggy and it tells me to head to the nexus to commune with the darkness. This time, the trip is much shorter as I have my sparrow and can't show off that signature Riley Reloaded intelligence by getting lost on other planets. I try to wiggle my sparrow into the Vex structure and make it inside. I make sure to park far away because the amount of times I've killed myself with my own sparrow explosion is concerningly higher than it should be. And then I take my place to commune with the darkness. Let's go, baby! It's time to go stasis on their asses where the light didn't provide. Here comes the darkness to give me that Zenkai boot. Let's see what this shiny new coat of paint can do. Stasis go! Vamanos! You gotta be sucking me through my jorts! Apparently even the darkness isn't able to fill this hollow shell. Well, we've been raw-dogging it for this long, so what's one more campaign added to the roster? I mini-tool the enemies, which in turn explode in glorious fashion. The Vex try to convert me to the good word of Vexology. You know, someone asked me, Riley, if you don't have the light, then how are you gonna deal with the Vex, since technically they predict most things with deadly accuracy? And the only reason they don't disintegrate your jaded ass from the existence or the timeline is that light isn't able to be predicted, to which I say, MIND YOUR DAMN BUSINESS! <laughs> because my ghost has just enough energy to keep us inside of our timeline. What's that? You want sources? My source is that I made it the fuck up! After the fight, Bungie decides to place the next objective being a chest on the other side of a pit, once again shitting in my cornflakes. But not to be dissuaded by single jumps, I begin thinking of a plan. They may know Riley as someone with raw sexual energy and maximum intelligence, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> I gotta give myself credit for this one. I've got no eager edge ammo, and none spawn during my battle with the Vex. They might be thinking, Riley, how is this not pre-planned? But if you know me, you'll know that I've never planned for anything in my life. The ancient Riley adage once again holds true. Think twice? Buddy, I don't even think once. But somehow, that single neuron fire just enough to connect the dots to my sparrow I brought in from before. I rush over to it, jump on the bike, and get ready to make my most metal of plays. My sparrow's engine roaring as we race towards the gap, and with nipples fully erect, and me almost passing out from holding my breath on this jump, I cross the gap. I break it down to bring my mental stability back, and once again push the limits of D2's physics engine that is put together with popsicle sticks and Elmer's glue by hoping my mantle catches the ledge. I kill the fallen that have the barrier blocking the way and open the box. Then is to not have to cross the gap once again and risk having to change my underwear for the seventh time, I fast travel back to Varix, who then tells me, man, you're doing some dangerous shit, but nothing safe has ever been cool. I am then tasked with taking down Phalanx, the warrior, but the catch is that I needed to draw her out of hiding. She's a bit of a psychopath because she needs me to prove myself before I can even get to see her. Like I didn't slap the shit out of most of her people on my way just up to get a look at Aramis. To top off this mass murder cake, not only am I going to prove myself once again, I'm going to do it by stalking the grounds of the Elixney's new home and killing as many people as possible for the sick demented warrior. Eventually, I get a bead on my next enemies. I kill them all and draw out two Briggs. This goes much easier than when I did an only powered melee run. Yes, I said melee, damn it! The amount of comments of people saying it's melee, not melee, you ass monkey, was just staggering. But with my fragile ego shattered by being called out for milady, I gun down the Briggs using my whisper to demolish them and begin my battle with the warrior's lieutenant, who suffers much the same fate. Afterwards, Phalanx says, Alright, Chuckle 
walnuts? Let's do this. Here's my address. Luckily, I packed my maple syrup because it was time to put the boots to her A. With careful fighting, I managed to clear the enemies in the first area. The only one that concerned me was the harpy with legs, being able to do its ground pound and sending me flying with the might of Zeus into a wall or something. But luckily enough, the whisper of the worm managed to just decimate this thing's health. I blast my way through the encounter, shoot the explosive shanks from a very, very safe distance. I then kill the shank sniping at me. Then I fight in the room with two cursed harpies with legs, but luckily, the whisper is taking no prisoners and wipes the mat with them. I then carefully fall onto the ledges as to not obliterate my ankles and begin the fight with the brig. The brig couldn't even stand a chance against me. I am death incarnate. Who needs the light when you have snipers this long? I give Phalanx the same treatment as soon as she spawns in. The damage was so quick that it immediately caused her to flee into the next zone, which almost caught me off guard. I managed to jump to the side and mantle up to the next part of the fight. After that, it's a basic rinse and repeat until she retreats once again. Then, I'm once again met with my largest obstacle, slightly higher than I can jump gaps. And believe it or not, in this entire challenge so far, this has been the toughest thing that I had to do. My titan's legs? They can't get me up. Man, I ain't never seen a titan jump. I have no salvation's grip ammo, and I just keep flinging my dumb ass at this ledge trying to get the mantle, but every time, I just fall slightly short of it. I look around the room for alternatives, but oh yeah, I'm basically in a vex coom void that electrocutes me when I step in it. Really making the saying that it's better to come in the sink than to sink in the cum. More of good advice than a meme. Then, in my darkest moment, a spark of brilliance stirs within this empty brain of mine. Then I switch some of my resilience mods to mobility and equip the powerful friends charged with light mod. This mod has a secondary effect of giving you plus 20 mobility whenever you add in an arc mod. Now with my mobility sitting comfortably at 95, I could hopefully finally end my 15 minutes of torment on this single jump and scale the ledge. I make the jump, swap all my mods back to where it was because not having the resilience tingles my pickle and it was finally time to face Phalanx. I hide behind the pillars while I demolish her entourage and when the darkness comes to grant me strength, I leg it for the well. While the darkness does freeze me, I am once again disappointed by the fact that the only ability my character has learned from this whole endeavor is breaking free from the stasis trap. I take down the little enemies until I'm faced with a new problem. Phalanx has a stasis shield that I can't break with weapons. I slide into her thighs and punch her in the kidneys, but she proves to be immune to the good old kinetic subclass. But not to be defeated by challenge rules, I once again manage to improvise, adapt, come, and equip my salvation's grip in hope of breaking her shields. Thankfully, when switching, Destiny doesn't steal all my heavy ammo, because if you've played Destiny for more than a couple minutes, you know that the laws of equivalent exchange on heavy ammo are basically fucking random <laughs> as to whether or not you get dick all. But then I just... <laughs> <laughs> I then decide to use Salvation's Grip to remove her shields, and I put an end to the Dark General with good old shotgun to the temples. I return to talk to the Exo Stranger who says that I need to look within, but when I do that at 3am, the voices only get louder, and it was time to once again get Jiggy in the Ziggy. My ghost remarks on how this feels wrong, me wielding the darkness, but it's like he hasn't been on this ride the whole time or something because the only thing I've been wielding is the callous mini tool. I would die for this beautiful little gun. Fun fact, Dragon actually messaged me to say that they were creeping on me and inspecting my character, noting that the amount of enemies I've killed with this thing so so far is just fucking skyrocketing. I head to Bray Exoscience to finish my communion with the darkness. It once again freezes my nipples, allowing me to hone my ability to break free from ice. The enemies that rush me don't stand a chance as I'm packing the big guns and I'm honed in the way of PvE. I'm hitting enemies with the mini tool, sniping from a range with the whisper of the worm, and using heritage to blow apart anything that gets even close to me. I'm bending these fallen over and showing them that guardians aren't just all powers. Centuries of honing their skills in combat have made them crack. They can pull off insane moves that take an insane amount of mastery and skill, such as getting a USB in on the first try. I'm then tasked with talking to Varix, who tells me that Aramis has been corrupted with powers, and that perhaps we are different in that regard. To which I say to Varix, if you've watched a single Crucible match, your faith in the Guardians would be 100% gone. We kill each other for fun, and then immediately start dancing, showing that we are truly psychotic. But with Phalanx out of the way, it was time to hunt down the Technocrat, the source of all the dark inventions. I'm tasked with killing Vex and the Asterian Abyss to get tracking devices, a way to get a bead on the Dark Inventor. You know, this challenge so far hasn't been all that tough. I've been smart with my playing, not taking any risk, feeling extremely overpowered for most of the enemies. That is mostly in part to the fact that Beyond Light and Shadowkeep don't have a difficulty slider and I'm well beyond the power and arsenal required for these DLCs. This is something that will be changed in the Witch Queen because to spice things up a bit, I'm gonna be cranking this bitch up to 11 and beating the Witch Queen on Legendary. I collect my tracking devices and head down towards Cadmus Ridge to deal with the incoming Vex Conflux. I clear the Conflux, burying my nose right against the Vex because I'm a certified monster at this point. Then, during 
During this encounter, something terrifying happens. It spawns in a server that does this to you. I almost shit my pants every time it flung me into the air, just saying, Dear God, let there be flat ground! Thankfully, I managed to survive every single fall. I kill the servitor and head to the flag to begin the technocrat mission. I rip my way through the mission. I'm smart at the traps. I've been through this many times at this point, so I know where everything is. I roll in like an angel of death. Nothing stands even the slightest chance at surviving me. I come to this first spot with some jumps, but I didn't commit to fully switching back to resilience just in case there were moments like this that showed up. I destroy the traps in the door and, and begin my rampage. I love these labs areas. The aesthetic of the blues and reds just flow so nicely together with the fog. It has this amazing aura about it. I wish that in Beyond Light, the origin of the Exos, Anna and Elsie Bray were the main focus of the DLC because they were extremely interesting almost every single time they were on the screen and in the main focus. Once we got back to the fallen narrative in the foreground, I was a bit disappointed because Bungie didn't put as much love into that narrative to really flesh it out. It's still a beautiful DLC with great environments, but the focus on gameplay and narrative is something that I'm glad they switched to with the Witch Queen DLC. The rest of these labs go pretty much the same as I'm tearing my way through it without a second thought. Everything goes well until I make it to this part. A huge gap. Now I had an idea of how I was going to handle this. The thought was that I would eager edge across, but with the gap being this big, my soul would vacate my body the moment my legs left the ground. I set myself in a position, nervously run my way to the jump, and <laughs> I made it across, but was once again left with yet another problem. These ledges were way too high to jump up. I switched to Salvation's grip and get molested by the ammo exchange, only giving one shot, but I accidentally make a pillar that's way too high to jump up on. I then decide that I'm gonna fully spec out into mobility again to see if I can make the jump that way. I test the height once, and once I see that it's good enough, I use zero hesitation and clamber up on the ledge. Making my way down the platforms was easy enough because the mobility actually made a huge difference. That didn't stop every jump on the way from stressing me right the fuck out, but I made it across with flying Hot Wheels colors. Now it was time to take down Praxis. The fight goes normally until I'd reach the part where the darkness returns to give you powers, but once again I'm disappointed by the wet fart the game gives me for a Zenkai boost and begin fighting the enemies, ODST style. I forgot that I was in a mission to kill the generals where they get the unique stasis shield that can only be broken by stasis damage. I was using Whisper of the Worm for this fight, so when I got to this final stage where the shield pops up, I had no ammo to deal with it. Thankfully, the enemies in this room kept respawning and I can just hold my ground until a heavy brick drops. Well, let me tell you that I was ramming my head against these fallen for a long ass time. I killed so many, swapped to a finder mod and continued to clear them out, but I swear this heavy brick had the RNG of a raid exotic because it took a solid 10 minutes for one to drop for me. I tried praying to RNG Jesus, but me being Walmart Jesus, we don't get along too well. But thankfully, a brick finally dropped and I shot it in excitement, used Salvation's grip to break Praxis' shield, and then dealt the killing blow on the sadistic machinist. been a while since I've seen a fallen captain of that caliber be taken up by one without the blessing of life. One, which is yourself. Been watching from afar, ever since the re-emergence of the hive on that forsaken moon. You're talented, that's for sure, even without the light. It's impressive. However, there's some not right. I'm sure you can feel it as well, almost like you've done this before. Three separate times, in fact. I have reason to suspect you have a specter on your shoulder. A specter? What the hell do you mean? It's a rare phenomenon that attaches itself to lightless guardians, draining their light and affecting them with power of their own. It's a parasitic relationship, often forcing part of their will onto their host. You call it your ghost for me. Ah, it's a yeah, it's a shitty color. Yeah, no, you're fucked. You're fucked. It's a we don't know what that one does yet. It is a great color scheme. Well, of course you'd say that. The specter's influencing your thoughts and tastes. I'd be careful. Seems like it wants you to overcome a great challenge. What the hell? A specter? We then get to see Aramis losing her shit and saying that I will bring these guardians the destruction they crave by resurrecting ya boy, Tanix. As though that has definitely turned the tide in the past, right? I return to the stranger's camp to see Zavala saying, I got no idea what you're doing or why you're here or why we keep sending you on these missions even though you have no powers whatsoever. But tighten that sphincter soldier and get out there, you know what I'm saying? I'm then tasked with talking to the yee yee ass Shaw Han who just being in his presence makes me want to drown my eyeballs in bleach or commit toaster bath. He then tells me to collect some 
fallen intel, which upon completing, leads me to fight Bacris inside of the Exodus Garden's Lost Sector where he's hiding. With the explosive power of my callous mini tool and my arsenal being jacked, it was an easy clap. I kill Bacris and am tasked with completing the Glassway Strike, and just like before in the Shadowkeep DLC, the most harrowing task I have is working with fellow Guardians, because they're honestly unpredictable. Thankfully, this strike goes extremely well with only a couple places that only pose a hindrance to me only. Any jump over a chasm is something that twists my nipples and makes me hold my breath, and Bungie put a lot of them in this spot with the Vex architecture. Thankfully, my mobility is high, but that doesn't mean I didn't take many risky jumps during these sections. We then fight our way across the Coombe Lake and move on to the final boss. I play very defensively here as these lads have powers and can take the brunt of the fighting, while I act more of a hidden sniper at the back of the room. The moment the boss gets a bead on me, I'm already in tactical runaway mode, but the boss falls and the game sends me to a cutscene. I love this cutscene. It's a tragic tale that Aramis got to watch the Traveler leave them. Something that drove her over the line. I honestly can't blame her because thousands of Elixni were probably killed in the wake of the Traveler's decision. One that it tried to do again in the Witch Queen by saying, Peace, nerds! I'm in the throne world now! But we showed up to say, The fuck you doing, dog? I return to Elsie, who says that I need to step away from the light and that I must control the darkness inside me. But I have neither, and have been consistently clapping all my enemies like they were dust beneath my Hot Wheels boots. The Ziggy then tells me to head to Reese Reborn to unlock the full potential of my powers. I commune with the crux and once again cause the whole room to explode in glorious solar heat. The darkness tells me nothing, but everyone seems convinced that I've unlocked some sort of chakra within myself. Even the elixir want to stop me, but Riley doesn't play when it comes to the mini tool. At this point, I'm feeling like I could replace my entire arsenal with it, and I would still be a monster in combat. After communing, Varix tells me that some of the elixir are trying to get away from Aramis being a psychotic ass clown. He wants to send them to meet up with Mithrax of House Light, who has such opposite views from the rest of the Fallen. He doesn't dock arms or take more than his fair share of ether, making him normal sized. It's a culture shock to the Elixni people, who have been abused almost their entire life thanks to the leaders of their people who have been obsessed with the past and not being able to let go. I can't blame them because of the circumstances as the universe has been less than kind to these people, and war is all that they've ever been allowed to know. The fear that the devil that they don't know is worse than the one that they do. I remember reading a lore tab that speaks about how most of the fallen born now aren't even from their homeworld. They are earthborn, but thrust into a war that they don't understand against a race they can't can't even begin to comprehend the animosity towards. It's a tragic tale that sometimes makes me feel terrible for the acts I commit upon the fallen, especially when I'm fucking vaporizing. <laughs> but thankfully, Mithrax decided to become our boy once I didn't shoot him in the face all those years ago. Because these are a people that need to try something new, because the old ways just aren't working anymore. But I clear out the fallen that want to stop the catch from fleeing Aramis's cold clutches, and with their freedom intact, it was finally time to take on the Kell of Darkness. I take a selfie with this lad named Crawlspace eating popcorn to commemorate the achievements I've made along the way and he gets a little close to me. <laughs> The Fallen have put a bunch of stops in to hinder my progress as I rip and tear my way to Reese Reborn. There are heavy brigs, shanks, and warriors doing their best to stem the tide of the approaching death. In this room with the Enforcer Brig, the most dangerous of situations happen as your boy's batteries and his controller suddenly shit the bed. I scramble around the room in real life looking for something I can use to power my remote and manage to actually find some batteries. That's right, I'm an Xbox controller user playing on PC. A certified freak of nature, barely even human. Like a gambit player, <laughs> I kill the brig. Demol Polish this nerd standing in front of Aramis, like, yeah, that's right, I'll hold you off, and begin my fight with the Dark Kell herself. My weapons come out swinging, they just shred through Aramis, and baby, baby, I'm dancing around the room with style and expertise. Aramis, after sustaining enough punishment, freezes me to the ground. The fight with Aramis has only a single scary part to it, that being if I ever need to jump away from her and she uses her ice powers to freeze me mid-jump. I'm going straight down off this skyscraper, and my ankles will surely not survive. But yet again, my weapons hit like a freight train. Aramis goes into a defeated stance and I stand back as last time when I went to go up to her, she jump scared me by popping into the stunt mechanic and nah bitch, he ain't physicsing me today. Then in her dying breath, the pyramid doesn't recognize her strength and she begins to freeze as she succumbs to the darkness inside of her heart with arms outstretched towards the pyramid. Her reign of terror was finally over. You're like me, Aramis. Caught up in something that you don't understand. The darkness, the light doesn't define the actions we have to take. I don't blame you for what you've done. I only hope that while you're caught in your limbo, you find some strength to finally move on. Goodbye, Aramis. 
Elsie tells me that she's been through countless timelines, and that there's a timeline only a parallel universe away where my character said, Peace, Light, catch you later, nerd, and fully embrace the darkness. She then says that light and dark swirl within me, that I contain an exterior of the light, but an umbral center. She then says to remember that you coexist with the darkness and the light, and that I need to strike that balance within myself, and to remember that when you take the darkness into you once again. I ascend the stairs, commence my final communion with the darkness, which then tries to kill me as I leave by putting a ledge right there that I was about to walk off of. You can't trust anything these days. Then for my final task, I must talk to Zavala, who tells me that the threat is contained for now, and that we can finally take a moment to rest. And in the dead of night, as I stare at the Traveler in all its majesty and mystery, my character says this. Why did you bring me back? To fight? To be an example? I've seen what's coming. You know what's coming! You're the only one who can help me. Help us, please! Give me back the light. I swear I'll save us all. And as we stare up at the Traveler, two passengers on the same journey, I beat beyond light without the light. Silent as ever. So, here we are. The final DLC. The one that started all of these challenges for me all that time ago. Where we now find ourselves once again. Ooh, look, a power color crash. This hasn't happened for a while. It's like spotting a unicorn. As always, I would like to extend a very merry damn you power color to all the fine people in the audience this evening. If you're wondering where all this hatred for power color comes from, literally watch any of my previous videos. It definitely wasn't because I was inept or anything. <laughs> but this is where the challenge suddenly becomes all the more real as we are no longer in the Little Leagues. This DLC has tons of verticality in it, making double jumping almost a necessity at times. The enemies finally don't play around either, meaning I will have to be extremely defensive and be at my best in order to beat most of the encounters. Like I said before, I am also playing on Legendary to make this challenge the challenge for the ages, meaning one slip up and I'm all the way back to being a new light. I make a break through the cornfield and begin my reign of terror. The Cabal are a lot beefier than I remember, but I've got an Izanagi's burden in my callous mini tool to hopefully give me the strength I require. In this DLC, I should have everything down to a science in order to make this work. I launch myself towards the Cabal guns I have so many times before in my previous runs, and run inside to hack the terminal. While hacking the terminal, I manage to fight off the Cabal pretty well, but there are a couple of minutes where things are looking dicey, but I always manage to pull through. I'm careful outside as I fight my way towards the fuel lines. The ships that fly above are not afraid to demolish your health if you poke your head out at the wrong time, so I hang back and shoot from the doorway. It takes a while to clear this fight, but I manage to scrape by. The heavy cabal engineer almost took me out though, but hiding behind the fuel line gives me enough time to regain my health for another assault. There are bullets flying everywhere, and I am fighting majestically with tactical mindset never before seen from Riley Reloaded. I'm making sure to play it slow and careful. We then enter the cabal gun that has caused so many deaths in the previous runs. You may be thinking, oh, he probably means that he died a bunch to the enemies inside, but for some reason, Bungie made heading towards the engine bay of the gun a hell pit that will kill you if you slightly land on it funny. But over the course of my challenge runs, I have become a honed edge against the forces of fall damage. Everyone in my comments made sure to tell me that if I fall perfectly in line with flat ground, no matter the height, and not landing on any angles or any pebbles on the ground, I will survive a fall due to the built-in one-shot protection. I run across the giant pistons in the bottom of the gun, making strong jumps across using Eager Edge, and carefully align myself with the pipes that have killed me so many times, perfectly ready and perfectly in line to completely land flat on the ground. This is going to be a cakewalk. The pipes! All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be right back shortly. Guardian. Guardian? Eyes up, Guardian. It worked. Uh, You're alive. Ah, uh, my head. You don't know how long I've been looking for you. I'm a ghost. Actually, now I'm your ghost, and you? Well, you've been dead a long time. This is fallen territory. We aren't safe here. I have to get you to the city. Hold still. Don't worry, I'm still with you. We need to move, fast. What the hell? I could have sworn I was... dead. It's all too familiar. But why?
You've gotta be fucking joking! <laughs> the one thing that always gets me! I said before that people telling me the flat ground will always be safe are fucking liars! <laughs> oh, there's fall damage protection. Well, how about you fall damage me off your mom, you b So much progress <laughs> in the blink of an eye. Why? Why? So that's gonna do it for this part of Lightless. I hoped you enjoyed. I know I asked in a poll if you would like me to release Lightless all in one go, but immediately afterwards, upon looking at the final thing, I wasn't exactly happy with it, so I doubled down and put more effort into the first one, and then I looked at the second one and thought, well, shit. <laughs> but I'm extremely thankful for you coming by and watching this, and for everyone who stuck with me while I get this out. There may be a brief period of smaller videos. I know we have a rift match coming up for the House of Mayrin and the Satu tribe to duke it out for glory once again. We're gonna probably be watching the event live and then just post the video like we did before. And I want to extend a huge thanks to everyone who helped out on this project because honestly these videos, while they take a while to cook up, is something that I've always wanted to create and I'm honored for all the talent poured into this thing. Huge thanks to Super Steven for cooking up the graphic in the beginning. It has since become my background on nearly everything that I own. You can find them on Twitter using the same name. Tell them Papa Rai sent you. Hopefully they won't be like, God, not more. Huge thanks to Luna Freyava for being the guardian this series. She's been killing it. Honestly, with me as a director, like I said in the last one, I don't know how she's putting the pieces together with me just being like, do say this, go! It's honestly quite impressive. So if you need vocal talent, that's where you go to find them. There'll be links in the description to all the people enlisted. And I want to thank Zeno for sacrificing much of his free time to cameo in my Riley Cinematic Universe. Ah, my turd blend of an MCU. Absolutely beautiful. And lastly, I want to thank everyone on Patreon who supports me generously while I disappear for half a month to cook something up that hopefully they can be proud of me for. It's a huge ask to even be giving me anything when I disappear that long, and honestly, I'm really thankful for it. So huge thanks to EXD7228, Kari Simpson, Caleb Warman, Kevin Noda, Fish, what have you done? Ban me, Eden's Gate, your boy Gamer Weenus, Nathan Dasiuk, Volkeen, Thrumund, Dragon Waffle, Jacob Dagrapont, Kefnet the Useless, Nathaniel Farmer, Curious Lich, Co Camo 3, Arson is Cringe, Crimbo the Undying, Madeline Celestia, Bogos Binted, Super Steven, the very same, but again, Mondo 117, James Escalante, Omega Null, Samarchi Deskhopper, Nand, Lost the Bob, Xavier Human, and Fufu Akio. To all of you, I said, take your damn money back. <laughs> I'll be doing this shit either way. But in all seriousness, I'm immensely grateful for all the support you guys give me. Without your help, these videos might not even be possible. So, so once again, thank you. So here's to 16,000. Your boy is doing it, and it's amazing to see that the channel has grown that much. Honestly, when every time I get like two extra views, I'm like jumping off the ceiling like, fuck yeah! <laughs> so now while well, I finally have time to beat my season pass because I've been doing challenge runs for days. These videos are a cry for help. I've been Riley. Thank you for choosing me to be your Hot Wheels blue and orange distributor in these trying times, and I can't wait to catch you in the next one.